I think the challenges of climate change and energy security are something that has really changed rapidly in the last three years. Um, from a period when we took energy and food for granted, we're now seeing a change where the whole of the European Union, the world, many world leaders now consider climate change and energy security to be the top of their political agenda. I think we can see that mirrored when you see the concerns with President Putin threatening big chunks of Europe with energy security and turning supplies off. When you see how Europe has reacted, they've set targets now for 20% of renewable energy by 2020. They want to have 10% biofuels, and Commissioner fisher bowl has adamantly stated that we can do that from British agriculture. We want to be confident that we can do that and we can save CO2 by converting crops like this into biofuels. However, we must make sure we do it sustainably. We must make sure we get the arguments across correctly. What concerns me, I think, is that the good news story that seems to be accepted about biofuels within Europe is being countered by some near, really negative messages about palm oil coming out of Malaysia. I think we have to remember that palm oil has been used for the food industry for many, many years. And it is only now this is being twisted to say that biofuels are causing these forests to be chopped down, orangutans to be driven from their homes because of the biofuel um, drive that is currently going on. We do, as an agricultural industry within the UK, have a great opportunity. The European Union recognises this opportunity, and we shouldn't rubbish what we can do in a sustainable way here in the UK and in Europe, where Marianne fisher bowl really openly says we can do 10% renewable fuels. She says 11% by 2020, with only a very small increase in domestic food prices, without damaging the environment. The European Environment Agency is really blunt about the sustainable way in which we can produce renewable energy. And we must make sure that the bad news stories from around the world don't prevent us having a positive contribution here in the UK. I think one of the big concerns we've had about the whole renewable fuels, biofuels debate has been the fact that this is going to make food much more expensive and actually have an impact on the third world as well. I think there's a, a number of points to this. I think there's one that food has been unbelievably cheap for a very long time. And if even in the developed world it is more expensive, we think there is lots of land, certainly in Russia, Ukraine, set aside land in Europe that can be used to produce more without food going up in price. But we also as an organisation engage with African farmer organisations similar to the ones we are involved with in Europe. And they're actually very positive about biofuels, creating new market opportunities for themselves. We have to remember that 75% of the world's poor are farmers, and they will benefit also from higher value products, from able to meet new markets for um, products they are currently producing. And the message we have back from um, the organisations we work with in Africa is they're very optimistic uh, about this creating a new market for the products they produce, producing renewable energy, and actually getting more value for what they currently produce as farmers. I think there's an aspect and a concern we have also within the UK, and I, I meet it with livestock farmers who worry about their costs also rising. What well, I think we have to remember as um, producers of, of feedstock for renewable energy, whether it is going into power plants, whether it's going into biofuels, this will take land out of production. But currently, we export 3 million tonnes from the UK. Cereals in a normal year would leave the country. If we put them into a bioethanol plant, for example, a third of that will be retained as an animal feedstock. That will be product that would otherwise be going abroad, remaining here, that can be used to feed livestock. So I don't want to see one sector thriving and another then being short of product. This is an opportunity that everyone can benefit. And we've seen actually this protein source being delivered to farm relatively cheaply in the United States. I want to see a biofuel industry that is sustainable. We must make sure that it doesn't damage the environment and our agri-environment schemes that put margins around fields, make sure biodiversity is maintained, are in place. So we shouldn't have the negative aspect, the knockers of renewable energy saying this is going to destroy our great landscape because we're committed to our involvement in protecting that. But I do believe that we can actually do both. We can have landscape, we can have biodiversity and we can have a renewable fuels, biofuels industry that works for everybody. We shouldn't be defensive. We must have an accreditation system that doesn't destroy um, rainforests in other parts of the world. 
This is a great market. Let's do it in a responsible way.